Americans taking on Mount Everest face the final leg of this very dangerous climb. I am Adrian Ballinger. And I'm Corey Richards. We're at 17,250 feet north side base camp on Mount Everest, three days away from leaving for our summit bid without supplemental oxygen. Coming up on CBS This Morning, we're going to show you what climbing at that altitude does to your body and how we're capturing it all on Snapchat. Stay tuned. New developments on the two professional climbers documenting their journey up Mount Everest on Snapchat. Adrian Ballinger and Corey Richards left base camp in Tibet today to begin a six-day climb to the top. In an interview you'll see only on CBS This Morning, they show us their plans for the summit. Dana Jacobson is here with how they also survived a dangerous night on the mountain. Dana, good morning. Good morning. When we last checked in with professional climbers Adrian Ballinger and Corey Richards, they had just been hit by this monster storm on the north side of Mount Everest. And while they were unharmed, it was a stark reminder of how dangerous this mountain is, particularly for two men climbing without the help of extra oxygen. 27,000. It's windy. When Adrian Ballinger and Corey Richards faced a brutal storm. Tents collapsing on itself. With winds approaching 50 miles per hour. <laughs> we just got out and dug it out. <laughs> their bodies were already depleted from climbing to nearly 25,000 feet where the air is thin. Your body is, is literally starved of oxygen, so everything that you do makes you out of breath. We've made the decision now that with this kind of weather, no seeming break, we've got to go down. Everest! Woo! Oh, no! We were battered the next morning, and what you're seeing in the photographs and sort of the snaps is, is just pure exhaustion. We just got our asses handed to us. <laughs> If I was thinking anything in that moment, it was that I, uh, I wish I had become like a surf instructor or a beach <laughs> bum or something as a career instead of a, a high altitude mountain climber. Ballinger has led over 100 climbing expeditions on five continents as the owner of Alpenglow Expeditions, while Richards was named one of National Geographic's Adventurers of the Year in 2012. Both men are part of Eddie Bauer's guide and athlete team. These mountains, they, they break us. They bring us to the edge. And finding where that edge is and then figuring out if we can still achieve beyond that, that's, that's what I love about this. Well, here we go again. And so the very next day, we woke back up. The weather looked good. We felt OK. And we went and decided to tag as high as we possibly could on the mountain. In order to eventually climb without oxygen to the top of Everest at more than 29,000 feet, the two men have to adjust to higher altitude slowly. They do this by climbing the mountain in stages with rests at lower elevations in between to let their bodies recover. We're just up going climbing. Just one day after the storm, they pushed to over 26,000 feet, an elevation known to many climbers by another name. The death zone. Dun, dun, dun. Right, exactly. As you go higher, your body just simply can't regenerate. And every minute uh, spent above that altitude puts you, without trying to be too, too dramatic here, puts you closer to death. The margin for error drops to zero. If you screw up, you die. At this elevation, they must constantly check in with a doctor stationed at base camp. She's just listening to our voices and how we sound. Are we slurring our words? Are we still putting together thoughts coherently? She's also making sure they eat regularly to keep up their strength. It is so hard to put food into your stomach. Liquid's better. So they drink meals instead. 24,500 feet, the highest Soylent has ever been eaten. After successfully reaching 26,000 feet, Ballinger and Richards return to base camp to rest up before making one final climb to the summit. It'll give us a quiet day on the mountain and all the time we need to recover and build those super important red blood cells. They plan to make their final push after most of the other climbers on the mountain, who are using extra oxygen, have summited, giving them a clear path to the top. We need, without oxygen, to never stop moving. If we stop moving, we'll freeze. And so we need a day without a lot of other people on the route, and we think we're going to get that in about a week's time. Fingers crossed. <laughs> 
Ballinger and Richards are uploading their climbing data every day to an app that's called Strava. It's a social media network for athletes and another one of their sponsors, actually. It allows anybody who has this app to follow things like their heart rate, the pace that they're climbing, their elevation. So while they're making this final push, it's not just about watching the Snapchat videos. You can also check in on how their bodies are actually holding up. So incredible. They're so fascinating to I watch know. these guys because yeah. they're so enthusiastic and they're saying they're doing something that's dangerous, no margin for error, error but they're still cracking mm -hmm. jokes. Yeah, and I just if you watched, make one mistake, you die. You die. Right. Right. And yeah. I just watched their last Snapchat video, which went up about uh, two hours ago, uh -huh. and Adrian to his dad said, you know, I want to do this badly, dad, but not badly enough to make a poor mistake. Like they wow. get it, they know yes. what it's gonna take. Yes. You have to rely on instinct because you're losing oxygen in your decision making. And less than 200, you said, have done it without, without oxygen. oxygen. 7,000 have ascended around that number and fewer than 200 have actually done it without oxygen. Mm -hmm. You can't wow. wait for them to come back and sit here. Yeah, and, and we want them to get there to but get back safely. Safely, yeah. absolutely Thank right. Thank you so much, Dana. Thanks. Thank you. And we have more from Adrian and Corey online. See how their crazy mountain hairstyles led to the creation <laughs> of the new hashtag hair by Everest. <laughs> what do you think, Charlie? Yes. What do you think? I go right to Everest. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two weeks without a shower is what that looks like. Looks like a bad mugshot. <laughs> yeah, I know. So check out the story on CBSThisMorning.com. A lot of wind. That would be an interesting look for Charlie Rose. I like it. <laughs>